Ladies and gentlemen, I've had a lot of questions in the comment section, and I'm doing my best to get back to everybody. If I missed you, I'm terribly sorry. Please leave your question again, and I'll try to get back to you ASAP. That said, I want to go through some of the most common questions and concerns that have been asked in the comment section, followed by issues that have been found with Duma OS 4 and the NetDuma R3, and what NetDuma is doing to fix them. And last but not least, the forums. So, upcoming new projects, starting off with Buffer Bloat. The next video out after this is going to be Buffer Bloat. How do you fix Buffer Bloat with Duma OS 4 and the NetDuma R3? Then after that, GeoFilter 2.0. What are the new features and how does it all work? And last but not least, Ad Blocker, which is still within Duma OS 4, and you can add list to the ad blocker, making it even more powerful. Hey, if you guys have an idea for something, leave it in the comments section down below. Of course, I listed that little bit of stuff, but there's a lot more I'm working on. I'm always looking for feedback and new ideas. A lot of you guys have done that over the years. I really appreciate it. It really helps. So if you have one, leave it in the comment section for me. All right, so some of the most common questions and concerns. I wanna start off with the top one. Duma OS does not make you better at games. It will not make you a pro player. Ah, that is a great observation, my friend, and you are correct. What Duma OS sets out to do is get rid of lag in your favorite online games. Now, it is the internet. Maybe a line went down on the route to the server or a million other things. It's imperfect. But Duma OS 4, with all the tools there, gives you enough where you can have a very smooth online gaming experience 99.98% of the time. I mean, you are going to run into servers and things that are just having a bad day. That can happen, even if the ping is low. Something you need to pay attention to that a lot of people don't is the geo filter. Make sure you're using your ping heat map geo filter and quality of service systems in conjunction with each other to get the best experience next thing that i've seen a lot of people say is well, all right man what what's so special about the net duma r3 duma os4 i have a net duma r1 and r2 and xr 500 1000 whatever and they're a pain i play one week everything's great i'm having a fantastic time i go to work i live life i come back it's terrible. I hate it. I have to go back and adjust things. I just don't like it. It's a, it's a nuisance. Hey, I completely understand that. And that's why NetDuma has completely redone their quality of service system. They now call it Smart Boost. You set it and forget it. It literally is that easy. You say, I want gaming prioritized up top. I want my device that I'm gaming on prioritized up top. That's it, you can walk away. Now the tools are there for you to tinker if you are a tinkerer. But in my experience with the new smart boot system, you don't need to. Now there, what, there is one big asterisk to this system. It relies heavily on deep packet inspection. And if your game has not been uh, put into the Duma OS cloud and doesn't have the deep packet inspection side of things, it's gonna run pretty good, but it's not gonna run as good as it could. Now, NetDuma actually has a way for you guys out there who are more technically savvy and who have the time and want to help them get more games added to their deep packet inspection. I will leave that down below for you for those interested. Of course, you can always just ask, but they are a small team, and so it kind of also relies on the community members helping them out along the way. Just keep that in mind. But most of the big games work right out of the gate. Your Fortnites, your Call of Duties, Halos, etc. You get in, you play, but gaming up top, you don't have to worry about those old subsystems from the old Duma OS routers. Another big thing I've seen people talking about is the geo filter. How does it all work? Does it work with Halo and stuff? And the answer to that is yes. Now I've noticed a couple people on PC having some trouble with stuff. I am not a PC player, I'm a console player, so I don't really have experience with that. I haven't played PC games in 10 years or more. And so, I, and for that, I will send you guys to the forums if I'm stumped. All right, some of the big issues when it comes to the NetDuma R3 that have been found and fixed. First one, 
Fortnite on PC. For some reason, people couldn't log into Fortnite on PC. This has been fixed. Next one, PPoE and VLAN. They're kind of stuck together as this will prevent some setups from getting online and using the router. These have been fixed. If you are still running into those issues, it's most likely your router has not seen the update yet. You can go to the forums and ask, hey, can I get the update pushed to me? They're working incredibly hard on a lot of this stuff. Now, those are the big ones that I've seen people talk about in the beta side and on the main forums. You guys got to remember, I am a beta member and we get the opportunity to see some new features and stuff like that before everybody else. I will say, I am incredibly proud of the NetDuma team and also kind of like, oh man, I feel kind of bad for them. They launched this product right before the holiday season. So cut them some slack when it comes to getting some of these bigger issues fixed. They're doing a really, really good job. But again, it's the Christmas season. If we compare the router to, let's say, Call of Duty, we all know Call of Duty comes out and it's rough around the edges. This is all part of being an early adopter of something. And even though Call of Duty comes out every year and we all think this should not have any problems, it does. And we have to wait a little bit. And normally it takes to the beginning of the next year before it's completely plan panned out and the game really starts hitting its stride. And that's the way I feel when it comes to a new router or really anything new. You got to give it a little bit of that early adoption buffer. You may be irritated. You may have a couple issues you're running into, but you decided to get it really early. It's not six months on. It's not a year on. If you run into issues, please use the forums and tell them about it. Of course, you can ask me as well, and I will do my best to help you. The community on the forums is absolutely amazing. Not only is the NetDuma team amazing, and they're working really hard and listening to all the feedback, they're also working on some stuff I can't talk about yet that, oh boy, in the coming months, you guys are going to really like, but shh, I'm not saying nothing. Um, so we're working really hard. We got, there's a lot to be done, but a lot of these big bugs have been fixed. Some of the smaller stuff is definitely on their to-do list. I will be keeping an eye on all of this and probably make this like a monthly thing where I come back and hold them accountable to the stuff that needs to be fixed. That way, it does get fixed. I think they're doing a really good job in this area, even around this early, you know, early adoption Christmas season. So hats off to the Net Duma team for sticking around during the Christmas season and actually taking care of some of these bigger bugs. All right, now, last but not least, the forums. I've been a part of numerous forums throughout the years. The Netgear forum, eh, D-Links, oh boy, others. And look, some forums are better than others. Some communities are better than others. This is just the way things are. But the NetDuma community has always been rock solid. Not only are the people who work at NetDuma really kind and really willing to help, but also the community at large who own these routers, we're all gamers. So we just want the best we can have and we make friends on the forums here. It's actually a really cool thing. Now, NetDuma Frazier, one of the forum administrators who's been doing this for years, has broke down a lot of the stuff that is going on with Duma OS 4 and the NetDuma R3. I'm gonna leave this linked down below for you so you can read it all yourself, but I wanna go through it because I think it's rather important. So, since the launch of the R3, the feedback has been really great. Of course, there are questions we're seeing and we gotta cover them. There's also a dedicated team of developers working on the R3. And I can attest to this, dude. The beta builds have been coming out hot and fast. And it's crazy because it's, we're just days away from Christmas at the time of making this video. All right, so, first big question. Will you implement blank missing feature or can it be added if you have a request for a feature to be changed or fixed or any ideas at all there's a link in the form there for you again i'll have that link down below just in case you're like hey i have this idea maybe they'll use it all right next thing i'm getting higher ping on the r3 compared to the r1 the r2 the xr500 xr1000 etc the answer to this is this will most likely be caused by study ping on the geofilter. Essentially, a ping buffer is added to your ping that absorbs spiking instability from the game that you normally would have felt. 
The result is a consistent ping throughout the entire game, allowing for a smoother experience. You can disable this by clicking steady ping at top of the geo filter map, and you can also experiment with your buffer amounts. I have not really seen higher ping. I mean, there have been a couple servers, a couple days where it's like five milliseconds more, and it's like, psh, whatever. Routing and stuff. The, I mean, a storm could have happened. Snow could have fell on an old line. There's, it's the internet, folks. You gotta remember, it's the internet. It's not, it's not perfect. It's never gonna be. All right, so that's that. The geo filter. Now, this is something that I previously mentioned. We're gonna talk about this. The geo filter is not working as expected. It's not working like the R2 or the XR routers. There's a lot of, there are quite of layers to the geo filter. Some common things you may find are servers not appearing on the map, servers appearing outside of your radius, not being able to ping a server, servers not always being able to be stabilized. Most of the time, it's because you've actually decided to mess with some key geo filter things while you're playing. The best way to resolve this is set up your geo filter before booting the console and game. If it's still not working, wait two minutes and try again. And you can also disable geo latency in the drop down menu and that'll make it act like the XR500 R2 or R1. The biggest new feature when it comes to the geo filter 2.0 other than the anti spike stuff um, built in with how that all works because it's layered with quality of service is also your geo latency. So they are aware of some of these issues and they are working really hard. Now, I'm going to asterisk this here. I am in the beta program. Something we noticed early on was it wasn't able to connect to a lot of uh, servers. You would see just blank. It would come up blank. We really rode their butts about it, and they fixed it, mostly. Something to be aware of is this is something that is going to be fixed in the future they plan to completely rewrite everything there and i expect it to be perfect the next big big update push for that particular feature so the geo filter stuff a little bit rough around the edges still early adopter days but i really feel like six months from now maybe even less time than that all those things will be fixed all right next big thing I've got limited congestion control, ping optimizer, but I'm getting my full speeds. This is actually a really easy one. I'll be showing it in my buffer bloat video. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this new tab there. Ah, you see that? Oh, it's so pretty. Well, this allows you, um, the speed bypass tab allows you to get your full speeds when you're doing a speed test. And this is great, so you know that you're getting your full speeds when you're doing a speed test. But when you're buffer bloat testing, you don't want this on. So make sure that you turn it off and I'll be going through all of that in my buffer bloat video. And then I can't get internet. Oh no. Well, Fraser says, don't panic. This is a common one. If you're completely new to routers, you may not be aware that you need to complete the setup wizard before you're able to get internet. Okay, I guess if you are completely new to routers, you may not know that. That's, that's actually a good one. Although somebody like me can go, ha. Huh. But I, then I can remember back about, oh, 16, 18 years ago, a long time ago now, when I started to learn all this stuff. I mean, everybody's knew it something once, right? All right, so this can be done by axing HTTP double backslash Duma OS or 192.168.77.1 in your web browser, or you can use the Duma OS app on iOS and Android. If you've completed the setup wizard and still don't have internet, reboot your ISP modem router, wait two minutes, and then reboot the R3, wait another two minutes. If you still don't have internet, it's most likely uses ISP DHCP identifiers such as PPE or VLAN or a combination of the two. They've got this fixed now, so that can be all taken care of for you. And if you're still not able to do it, you can come over here to the forums and ask for help. Ugh. All right, cool. So all of that being said, they're aware of a couple of the, the VLAN and the PPOE issue. Again, that has been fixed. The update should be being pushed out soon, very soon. I have moderate or strict NAT. This has happened throughout the years. Don't worry. Moderate NAT is not really something you guys need to worry about. If you have moderate NAT, moderate NAT can actually connect to open and it'll connect to strict. So you're still basically open NAT. 
just with a little bit of like, you know, it's like a guy nudged you in the hallway. It's not nice, but it's fine. It ain't going to, you walk by and you're like, okay, whatever. It, it's fine. If you have strict nat, then you need to worry. But open, moderate, I eh, wouldn't worry about it too much. Make sure your ISP modem router is set up so that all traffic is passed straight to the R3. Make sure if you're using a modem that needs it, put it in a bridge mode, DMZ the R3, reboot everything again. Last but not least, and I will be covering this in the buffer bloat video, ping optimizer doesn't complete a test. This is something they are aware of and working really hard to get fixed, but they kind of rely on an outside service. So the servers used for ping optimizer, the test may no longer be used or busy when you're actually trying to test. Try again at a later time. If it's consistently failing, you can go into advanced. Again, we'll go over that in the buffer bloat video. It's something they're very aware of and something that they will have fixed. Again, I think probably within the next six months. I mean, they are jamming it out this time around. So. Uh, that was a lot to go through. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I will do my best to get back to you. And until the next time, as always, take it easy.